second video on the topic of sustainable energy policy we have is on the impacts of global warming. This is to justify the urgency why we need a sustainable energy policy, not just because fossil fuels are not unlimited or burning fossil fuels like coal creates air pollution. Global warming is having actual impacts on Earth. Let's see the Arctic. It is melting at a rate of 9% per decade. The melting Arctic would not cause any water levels, right? But if the ice from Greenland melts down to the ocean, dilute the sea and lower the salinity, it would have significant effects with a slower conveyor or even may stop the ocean conveyor. Up the far left corner, you can see the summer ice coverage has been shrinking quickly in the last few decades. The ocean conveyors are driven by warm water from the equator of warm areas like Africa and Mexico Bay, like the Gulf Stream, from West Atlantic to Europe, and sink down when they encounter the cold ice from Greenland. If Greenland ice melts and slow down the Gulf Stream or the warm water could not move up north, the winter in Europe would be very cold and freezing. As the conveyor also extends to the Indian Ocean and even the Pacific Ocean, the areas being affected are huge, covering half of the world's oceans. Not just the oceans, the actual impacts of global warming include 1. The reduction of biodiversity due to losing habitats, due to higher temperature, or reduction of water from mountain grazes. More diseases, endemic diseases are increasing health risks. As temperature increases, those germs like bacteria and viruses are spreading from hot areas out to those areas used to be cooler. 3. Extreme weather. As hot air drives the water up to cause more storms, floods, and the water will be evaporated from the land, causing droughts. The weather becomes harder to predict and getting colder and hotter since the buffering power or capacity of the planet from the ocean is weakened. Because climate change becomes unpredictable or unforeseeable, the economy is being affected too. Hurricanes cause damages and economic loss too. Droughts would reduce resource supply, etc. The Global Conference held a decade ago already pointed out that out of 40,000 species examined, 12,000 of them are facing extinction risk, including one-eighth of the birds or 13% of the flowering plants, a quarter of all mammals. Today's atmospheric carbon dioxide levels are the highest in 650,000 years record. Antarctic climate change or temperature rose and carbon dioxide concentration and methane concentration were tightly coupled. The carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere was 180 ppmv in the last glacial period, moving up to 280 ppmv in interglacial time, it was 206, and today it's more than 400 ppmv and it's rising. So please help to do something. I'm not asking you to protest like the Greenpeace staff here in Hong Kong who went to the power company to protest. In this city, we need one. Reduce city heat. Use public transport. Build less road and urban area, etc., to reduce heat island effect. Two, low carbon living. Live a low carbon life and practice carbon neutral. Set targets for emission reduction to cut energy consumption, such as like stop using tungsten light bulbs. Start your carbon audit now. Three, plant more trees. Conserve rural 
and plant more trees. On global partnership to fight climate change, the first treaty was the Kyoto Protocol, which took effect in 2005, aimed to cut 6 to 8% of the six greenhouse gases relative to their 1990 levels by 2012. There were Kyoto mechanisms with schemes for trading greenhouse gases and encourage international cooperation to achieve carbon neutral, with a stack of very thick documents of international laws in the treaties. If we do not do anything to reduce, the carbon dioxide emission would go up in this century due to population growth and energy consumption increase, especially in high growth countries like China, India. Of course, there are low growth countries with lower assumed GDP or gross national production or population growth, energy, lower energy and carbon intensity. Turning into figures and countries, the industrialized nations expect to have 50% growth. Developing nations could have up to 180% growth. On average, total developing countries around 80% growth from 1990 to 2015. The Kyoto Protocol tried to reduce or deduct 8% in high growth countries. 7% for the U.S. Some countries are allowed to grow 10% like Australia and Iceland. The Kyoto mechanisms include joint implementation with international cooperation, two for clean development mechanism with new technology to cut emissions, also emission trading, set ceiling to allow trade between countries. Since then, there are carbon markets around to facilitate carbon dioxide emission trading in an open market with a fixed price tag on carbon dioxide. We can cap and trade like any other commodity in the carbon market to promote carbon reduction. As you can earn money from the carbon emission you save, a very positive and encouraging way to cut carbon emission with incentives. How about carbon tax? To penalize those who emit carbon, and you have to pay for that. Like you fly on a plane, on each flight, you can calculate the amount of carbon released, and you need to pay carbon tax to settle and to achieve carbon neutral. In Europe, for example, in France, carbon tax of like 14 euro per kilogram of carbon dioxide is already in place. You might wonder how such tax might affect business. Low carbon business had actually expanded since our last economic tsunami. There are now new terms here for us, carbon neutral. By carbon compensation to achieve, we need to do carbon audit. But is carbon tax better than carbon trading? We actually need both to penalize those who release and trading to encourage those who save and earn money. From now on, we consider other substitutions more seriously. Nuclear power, renewables, and power storage. This figure shows the options we have by comparing carbon dioxide emission per kilowatt hour, KWH, production from coal, gas, hydro, solar, photovoltaic, wind, and nuclear power. Obviously, gas is better than coal, but the renewable energies like solar PV, hydro, and wind could also reduce much of the carbon emissions. Changing fuels would take time, or sometimes, as consumers, we have no choice. Improve fuel efficiency and make conservation would be the easier options. We could actually avoid doubling of 
carbon emission by using this wedge strategy developed by professor in Princeton University in these wedge games to fit in various options into the stabilization triangle. Adding four wedges here, we could really set our path to flat path. And yes, we need to put different wedges in one by one. This diagram shows the wedges we have. Nuclear in red could be an option, but there are many other options for efficiency and conservation in yellow. Fuel switching in blue and putting these green wedges, which are renewables and bio storage methods. I would not say that the Kyoto Protocol was a great success, and we need to develop more treaties to help saving our world from global warming. Ten years ago, we had the Copenhagen Conference fail to make a deal. In 2009, the U.S. wanted to charge imports with common tax but failed. Beginning in 2012, emissions would be kept at 3% below 2005 levels, increasing to 17% below 2005 level in 2020, and 83% below 2005 levels in 2050. In EU, the target was 20% and now 30% reduction in 2020 of 1990 level. In the Copenhagen Conference, China campaigned that they are the world factory. So it was unfair to make them punished with carbon tax. According to them and many developing countries, a fairer mechanism or calculation is based on carbon intensity, which can carbon emission per unit of economic output like GDP, gross domestic production, say per 100 US dollar GDP. COP21 and Paris in 2015 was a success with a two-day forum involved almost all countries around the world. Could they keep the promises? I'm not so sure. Look at the US, but even Trump goes to the other way around. Different states in America are actually doing a lot to reduce carbon emissions. That's all. I have for the second video on sustainable energy. And next video, the third video, we shall look into what we can do in Hong Kong. Bye-bye.